So guys, we're going to be talking about the Ali Gunnar Solskjaer interview. I listened to the whole hour and 20 minute interview. It was a very, very good interview. Very, very good video. Um, and honestly, the hour and 20 minutes flew by. It was a very, very good video. And I wrote down some talking points that I took away from the video when I was listening to it. And we're just going to go off of the talking points. And yeah, I'm just going to discuss it and give my thoughts on it. So before we get into it, make sure you guys hit the like button, comment, and subscribe if you do enjoy. And yeah, the first talking point I want to roll into is dictatorship at Manchester United. He had to go through multiple levels of management to approve players. So he had to go through multiple levels of management. He had to go through this person, this person, this person, then finally probably the owners. Then if they all give it the green light, okay, now you can get that player. So it wasn't him running the ship. It wasn't him dictating the way he wanted to do it as the manager. It was this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. He had to go through so many levels and pillars. And obviously, Ali, now I listened to the interview, he said that he's not going to take a job too fast because he wants to go in and do something on his own terms because working at Manchester United will have you in that way, basically. He was like, it's not on your terms. It's on this person, this person, this person. I, I get what he was trying to say. And he said, if I take another job, I'm going to make sure I'm doing it on my terms as a manager, who I want to sign, who I want to get. And obviously that rolls me into the next point of the signings that Manchester United missed out on. Declan Rice, Jude Bellingham, Erling Holland. These guys were going for good prices when they were younger. Obviously with Jude Bellingham, they did bring him to Manchester United. But the way Manchester United were structured at that time, Jude Bellingham said no. And obviously you see how good he's doing at Real Madrid. So honestly, did he dodge a bullet in a way people are going to say yes. Then you look at the likes of Erling Holland, who obviously has went on to Manchester City and is dominating. He can't stop scoring. And you look at that signing, he was only 20 million pounds, and Manchester United didn't capitalize on that at the time, and now he's a world beater now. Declan Rice, same thing. He's in a potential title-winning squad at Arsenal. He's doing very, very well at the center defensive mid position, which is a position that we still are very, very weak in, I would say, at the moment. Obviously, Casemiro, but honestly, we probably, you know, people say Kobe Mainu as well, but... What if we had Declan Rice in our team, another strong CDM who's an actual CDM, not mixing and changing stuff, because that's, people like to put people, center mid CDM, that's two different positions. It, it, even though it's, they can play there, it's, it's a different ball game, because you got to be more defensive in that position. But yeah, also another talking point, Ali bit his tongue at some of the things um, that he was saying. Obviously, he didn't want to say stuff too out of turn, because, you know, like, obviously he was saying stuff, but you could tell at... One or two or three moments, because, you know, listening to it. And so he kind of held back a little bit. He said, you know, because Ashley Young in the locker room, who was the captain at the time of Manchester United, was like, thank you, finally we're playing the Man United way. And obviously the managers that were before Ali Gunnar Solskjaer, which would be Van Hall and Mourinho, were probably talking about things they did at other teams. And it's like, you're not at these other teams anymore. You're at Manchester United, but you're talking about stuff you did in the past. And I think players pick up on that vibe, pick up on that energy. When you keep talking about things you've done in the past, what are you doing right now? So, yeah, obviously, Ollie bit his tongue in the way he didn't mention the managers. Obviously, you're not going to do that. And he held back a little bit. He was like, you know, the club did, you know, help them and did something. Because you're talking about your former employers. You can't really go in too crazy because there's probably something in the contract that he had in the non-disclosure agreement and stuff. That's why he's talking now. Because he couldn't do it after the interview, which we're going to roll into right here. He had the interview when he got sacked from Man United, right, that interview. He said he did it because he didn't want to wait two months and slag the players off or talk, um, talk shit about the players or whatever. He did it right then and there. He didn't wait because he wanted to do that interview right then and there, right after he got um, sacked from Manchester United. And he talked about getting sacked from Manchester United. He talked about he came in in the morning, um, his wife went on a flight or whatever, and Ed Woodward basically brought him into the office, talked to him for like five minutes, and then he went and, and they got it all sorted and stuff. And then he went and talked to the other players, you know, talked to the players and stuff because he's getting ready to leave. And then it was just like, bam. And, and it was only, he said it was only a five minute talking. The guy was there for like two years. Five minutes is crazy. They were like, well, that's it. And they just cut it just like that. And that was the beginning of the domino effect at Manchester United. And obviously, it's leached into what is going on today. And obviously, it's going to roll right into the CR7 thing. Now, Ollie talked about CR7. Now, the tagline and stuff is um, Ollie's Ronaldo regret and all this stuff. And when you listen to the interview, he clearly said in the interview, he does not regret signing Ronaldo. He was excited about signing Ronaldo. Go back and listen to it. That's what he said. He was excited about signing Ronaldo. He had no problems with Ronaldo. They're very, very good friends. They're on very good terms. So these taglines and stuff that 
people are trying to put in because they they're trying to you know ask him you know like Jamie Carragher, ne- um, you know Roy Keane, Neville. Because I've heard them talking a little, especially Jamie Carragher. He, he definitely talks a little slick about Ronaldo. That's Jamie Carragher was the one that Ronaldo then shake his hand when he went onto the field that time in that game. He went around and shaked everybody else's hand, and he walked by Jamie Carragher. It's a very very viral video, and yeah, so um. When it comes to Ronaldo and Ollie, they're on very good terms. And obviously, when um, Ronaldo, when um, Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer left Manchester United, um, he said that was when Ronaldo, when most of the problems started, was when he left, which is very, very true. When Ollie left Man United, a lot of the problems with the Ronaldo thing arose. Now, obviously, Ronaldo coming into Manchester United, Ollie said he was demanding three games out of four and stuff. He wanted to play in a lot of games, and that's and that, that's nothing new. It's Ronaldo. He wants to be involved. He wants to play. He's a superstar. He's a diva, but Ollie knows this already. He played with him. He played with him the, when he was younger the first time at Man United, and he's his manager now, so he knows how Ronaldo is. You don't think he knows how Ronaldo is? I mean, come on, man. He knew that already, and they already approved the signing. They didn't even ask... Um, you know, Ali didn't really know. It came kind of last minute. But he said, yeah, of course I'm going to take Ronaldo. Who wouldn't? Any manager in world football would take Ronaldo. Like, it doesn't matter his attitude. It doesn't matter because the accolades speak for itself. So let's not kid ourselves here. Any manager would still take Cristiano Ronaldo right now. Let's not fool ourselves. Messi, too, is partner in crime. It doesn't matter. And honestly, the way people, you know, they try to twist it or put these little taglines in, Ali's Ronaldo regret. What regret? He didn't have any regrets. All the time that Ali was at Man United, Ronaldo was rolling. He was playing very, very well. Mr. Clutch, Mr. Inevitable. He was doing his thing, man. He was absolutely unstoppable. He pulled us into that EFL Cup. Um, He was scoring for us, scoring two, three goals. He scored the hat trick against Tottenham, obviously. That comes to mind. And he, he was going crazy. He was scoring like crazy, digging us out of holes, getting us points, getting us goals. And yeah. It just dropped. As soon as Ali left, then it all started falling apart. Obviously, you had the Ragnick when he came in. He Ali didn't even talk about that. Obviously, he's not going to talk about that because there's no point. Because Al- Ragnick wasn't here long enough. And plus, when he came in, they started cha- he started changing stuff, having training at 5 in the afternoon, 9 at night, just, just, just doing random stuff. And it, it didn't work out. And obviously, he didn't last that long. They got him up out of there with the swift quickness. I think he lasted, what, five months, six months, so... He wasn't there long enough to really do anything. And then obviously Ten Hag came in, and here we are now. So this is it, man. And then Ronaldo ended up leaving, obviously, with the World Cup situation. Then he went on Piers Morgan. And and, and, and this all happened under Ten Hag. None of this was under Ali, and it just all fell down. Then they mutually terminated Ronaldo's contract. Then, then the Jaden Sancho situation happened. Then, and then all this stuff is coming out now with Rashford and Bruno. It's, it's, it's just all a domino effect. It's been building up over the past four years, because Ali was here during the um the COVID era, lockdown ball. That's when Ali was here with Greenwood, Pogba, Ronaldo. The, the, we had a great team: Rashford, Martial, um, Bruno. Bro, we had a great team. We had a very, very good team. How we didn't win a trophy is crazy. We got close. We got to the Europa League final, and we lost to Villarreal. If we would have won the Europa League, then Ali definitely would probably still be here. I have no doubt in my mind because the trophy would have bought him more time. I think it was just him not winning trophies, people getting frustrated, obviously him losing 5-0 to Liverpool, then losing 2-0 to City. And after the Watford game, when he lost 4-1, he knew at halftime already. He already knew. The players knew, too. They started crying in the locker room. He says that. Multiple players were crying in the locker room because they knew he was going to end up leaving. And that's crazy, man. So I want you guys to let me know what you guys think about the Ali Gunnar Solskjaer interview. I really, really enjoyed it, man. And those are the main talking points that I took away from it. And, yeah, other than that, guys, please smash the like button, comment, and subscribe. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. It's been my time to see you guys. Thank you so much. And I'm out.